Hi, and welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. I got to preface this video in this podcast, I should say, by saying it's Friday the 13th. That's usually not a good sign in terms of luck for anybody. However, we're not talking about sports betting. We're talking about professional sports handicappers that you invest money in and we make you money. So screw Friday the 13th because I got the man they call the jewel in Thailand, Jesse the Jewel Shul. He's with me today. Jesse, how are you, my friend? I'm feeling good, Ross. I'm not worried about superstitions. Uh, if I was worried about stuff like that, I wouldn't be in this business. So I don't know if you caught my other podcast with Joey D'Amico on uh, Sports Memo, but um been a little choked up today a little bit because uh, I, uh, you know, I try to keep myself in great shape for my age and look, uh, not look my age. And uh, I officially became an old man last night, Jesse, as uh, I welcomed my first grandchild into the world last night, Haley Grace. Uh, six pounds, one ounces, one ounce, I should say. And um, she was a month early, but she's 100% healthy. So, you know, she was due on February 9th. And I know she's was in her mama's stomach going, Mom, I can't be born close to the Super Bowl because of grandpa. And that's what happened. So good. Uh, really, really, really great um, thing in my life that occurred last night in it can't get it, it. It can't get any better from here. But I feel good about today's pick. So anyway, we're going to be discussing college basketball today. Uh, before we get to the college basketball picks, I'm going to be covering the Villanova Butler game, while Jesse will be looking at the Illinois and Michigan State game uh, that goes on Friday evening. Um, folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I would kindly ask you to take a second to do so. It costs you absolutely nothing. There's no strings attached. There's no obligations. There's no subscription plans. Quite simply, uh, you'll see an OSGA logo on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Hover over that. Um, a subscribe button will come up. Click subscribe and then hit your alerts bell, our notification bell, and you'll be alerted upon any of our future uh, Winter, Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast being published on this channel. And I don't know why you wouldn't. If you're watching this, you're interested in sports betting. And if you're a regular uh, user and uh, or viewer, I should say, and you haven't subscribed, uh, think again, folks. You, you need to subscribe. It would certainly go a long way in keeping this channel alive now and in the foreseeable future. Jesse, sorry to uh, be long-winded there, but I had to get that out of the way. And... Um, uh, tell the folks a little bit how you've been doing of late and what you might have coming up on this NFL playoff weekend. All right. Well, I did finish at Sports Memo, the number one NFL handicapper in 2022. Uh, it seems like a long time ago now, but I started the season on a 10-0 and run. Uh, also very good with college football. Had a big year. Uh, you know, the beginning of the year was better than the end of the year but certainly excited about Wild Card Weekend. Also, I'm the number one soccer handicapper at uh, Sports Memo uh, for 2022, and the Manchester Derby goes this weekend. I've got a, a big play, a 10 unit. 10 units are big plays on uh, the Manchester Derby. So really excited about this weekend and uh, excited about college basketball and uh, what the future holds here in the uh, the rest of January, February, and all the way to March Madness. One of the best handicappers in the country, that's Jesse Shule. You can find him at jessieshule.com. You can find him at sportsmemo.com. You can find him at picksandparleys.net, just to name a few. He's on several other sites as well. Um, Jesse finished number one in the NFL. I wasn't quite as for fortunate, but I did finish number six. I finished uh, 14 games over 500 during the NFL regular season, going back to – the NFL preseason, which I won eight and four, uh, it's been a great NFL season. I mean, even at number six in just 16 games over 500, we made a good profit. College football, I was teetering around the 500 mark all year, and then I went on an absolute tear down a stretch going 18-7-1 and one with my last 26 in college football. That includes 13-4-1 and one 
in bowl games and 3-0 and in the college football playoffs. Why I mentioned college football, uh, yes, the season is over, but it goes to show you when big games, high-profile games uh, were in front of me, I was locked in and zeroed in just the way I am every year. So, again, folks, big NFL playoff weekend. I'll have selections in all six games. And uh, Jesse, um, he'll have picks on uh, on his site and at the various other sites he posts at. Uh, you're not going to get two better guys than put your, to invest in and put your faith in than me and Jesse when it comes to NFL handicapping. All right, Jesse. Uh, college basketball is the subject for today, and um, uh, tonight, Friday night, uh, we're going to be taking a look, or you're going to be taking a look, I should say, at the Illinois and Michigan State game. We were discussing this off air. This this game opened at four and a half, and uh, one thirty six and a half. It's since uh, gone to Illinois minus six and a half and one thirty seven and a half. So a two point move to the Illini. What says Jesse about this contest? Well, Ross, when I looked at this line, I got to admit, I had to rub my eyes a little bit and say, am I seeing this right? Because uh, from where I'm standing, this looks like it should be a close game. Uh, we talked about betting on home fa- home teams in, in uh, divisional games like this, uh, the last show with Sean Higgs, and I picked Arkansas as a pick em at home against Alabama. And what did Sean Higgs tell me? He said, in this situation, every single time I'm going to take the home team. In this case, I'm going to take Alabama. And Higgs was right. Uh, all the power to him. He's on a roll this year. But uh, for me, I, this is a spot where I normally lean to the home team. But Illinois opens at four and a half. That looks like a fair line to me. Um, these teams have a history. They've played some close games before. Illinois did win uh, both meetings last year. And Illinois opened the season in ranked in the top 25. They came into the season with higher expectations than Michigan State. Supposed to be a down year for Michigan State. Supposed to be a, a good year for Illinois. However, things have started to even out. Uh, Michigan State's been the better team lately. Seven straight wins. They're four and one in the Big Ten. Uh, I did mention that Illinois won both meetings last year. The score at home against Michigan State In Illinois, 56 to 55, a one-point win. And now you're going to ask them to cover four and a half or five, and then the public's going to bet that up to six and a half. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, Illinois is four and nine against the spread in their last 13 versus a team with a winning record. Uh, Michigan State's five and two against the spread in their last seven on the road. Three of the last four meetings between these two teams has been decided by five points or less. This is two of the better teams in the Big Ten. You know Big Ten basketball, usually close games. Six and a half is just too much for me. Uh, And I know it looks like it might be a a sharp money move. I'm going to take the points here. Too many points for me. Yeah, well, sharp money move. Sharp money doesn't always win, okay? So, and you make some good points, Jesse. I mean, uh, first of all, you mentioned the scores from last year or score from last year uh, when these teams two teams collided. And uh, I just want to bring to the the viewer's attention, if you don't know it already, that was a much better Illinois team in my estimation than this version. Now, is there talent on this Illinois team? Absolutely. I mean, you, but there's also been a couple of transfers that have had to play a key role uh, in their success this year. And lately, the cohesion and the chemistry doesn't look like it's there for Illinois. Boy, I saw them play earlier this season, Jesse, against UCLA. They came from 15 down in the second half to win on a neutral side. I said, boy, this Illinois team is going to be a force. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's gone the other way of late. And uh, it's if I'm an Illinois fan, I'm very nervous the way my team has been played, uh, has played recently. But – um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't make an argument against the Michigan State pick. Uh, I also won't be using this game tonight. So uh, Jesse Shule likes the Michigan State Spartans plus the six and a half at Champaign, Illinois, over the Illinois Illini. I'm going to take a look at the Villanova and Butler game. Right now, as we speak, uh, Villanova is a one-point favorite. Um, something has to give here, Jesse. Uh, Villanova. 
one and four in her last five. Butler, two and five in her last seven, including one and two at home. Uh, both teams have played extremely difficult schedules. As a matter of fact, both teams, I believe, are in the top 15 in terms of strength of schedule, according to Kempom, who, who I uh, uh, think is one of the most accurate college basketball analytics and data sites you'll find anywhere. Um, Butler is coming off back-to-back -back losses by 16 at St. John's and by 25 at Seton Hall. And Villanova is coming off a 75-65 loss at DePaul in a game they were a six-and-a-half-point favorite. So I went to my trusty 4D handicapping software. Folks, if you're not familiar with the 4D handicapping software uh, database, um, ESPN, the magazine, did an article on this 2003. Uh, guys like me and Big L, Mark Lawrence, we're all using that. Uh, I don't use it 100% to make my picks, but I certainly use it as a contributing factor. And I found some validity on a betting angle in college basketball in this particular situation here. Anytime you have college basketball teams like Villanova, who are either a pick em or a favorite, Villanova's minus one, and they're coming off a straight-up loss as a favorite by six or more. So Villanova's coming off that straight-up favorite loss at DePaul, and they were a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, and they're facing an opponent coming off back-to-back -back conference losses. Um, and again, um, we're looking at Butler coming off back-to-back -back losses to St. John's and Seton Hall, both in conference. Those teams like Villanova in that situation have gone 57 and 14 straight up since 1997. It's 80.3%. Now, why do I bring up a straight up betting angle? Quite simply put, folks, the line is only minus one, and uh, the straight up betting angle takes on added significance because of the point spread parameter or the exact point spread. And uh, I'm going to lay the money line here with Villanova. Um, I'm getting them right now at minus 110. It may go up as high as minus 120. That's okay. I'm going to take Villanova on the money line over Butler. Any thoughts, Jesse? Yeah, no, that, that makes plenty of sense to me. Uh, I, I, I'd be interested in the total as well. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a lower scoring game. Yeah, and it opens at, teams. I believe it opened at 132, and it's now up to 134 or somewhere in that neighborhood. It did open with a lower total and it's now up to 134. So that's pretty interesting because uh, you're right, Jesse. When you look at these two teams, they do not play high-tempo basketball offensively. Um, neither one turns the ball over at all. Uh, not at all, but e at a very low percentage, and both are not good at forcing turnovers. So uh, you're not getting those easy transition baskets in Villanova and Butler games like normally – you would see in other matchups. So yeah, it all makes sense that why, why it would be a lower scoring game, but I'm going to stick with my pick Villanova minus minus one ten. And again, Jesse Shule, he likes the Michigan state Spartans plus the six and a half over Illinois on the road. So again, folks, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Don't forget, um, you could get my picks at rbwins.com, sportsmemo.com. You can find Jesse, uh, sportsmemo.com, picksandparleys.net, jessieshule.com. Uh, and uh, we've been winning, and we'll continue to win right through the NFL playoffs and Super Bowl, and a lot of good stuff coming up in college basketball and the NBA. Until the next time. Uh, which will be later this afternoon when I'll be joined by Mr. Sean Higgs to cover some college basketball for tomorrow. Uh, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Take care and God bless, folks.